Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Another viewer has submitted a multimeter for me to take a look at. This is the Tektronix DMM 916 True RMS meter. Big shout out to Kiss Analog. Really appreciate you sending that in for me to take a look at. At this time I like to also give a big thanks to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate your support. So yeah, this meter is quite large compared to the EEV blog meter. You can see it's quite a bit larger. It's got some mass to it. It feels really solid. A lot of functions here and settings. Must have been a pretty high-end meter. I don't know, you know how old it is or anything like that. It had a sticker on it wasn't sure if I should show that in the video so I peeled it off it's just something about a university I think it must have been their old uh, equipment or something they retired and I did notice that this jack here is missing the internal socket part I don't know if it shows on camera I can see a screw down there so uh, maybe that worked loose and got lost I checked in the packaging. I didn't find it, unfortunately. So, I have to see if I can uh, maybe find a, or buy a replacement part, if that's even possible. Maybe I can move one of these over to this position. You know, all my other multimeters can measure current. Yeah, I got enough of those. Uh, so, I really don't miss it here. I can move that over here, possibly. So I have to open this thing up and see. It does turn on at least. It's got the dual display, various functions. Of course, I have to check the backlight. What's it doing here? Oh, it's trying to find a uh, signal to measure. Okay, turn the backlight on. And uh, I'm not really seeing anything. Oh, very dim. You can see it right there. I believe that is an incandescent backlight. Wow, I haven't seen that in a while. How old is this thing? Well, at any rate, let's pop this thing open and see what's on the inside. Okay, I removed the synthetic bumper thingy here, cover, whatever you call it, and here it is. It's a double layered type deal here, double board. It takes a 9 volt battery. Well, if the battery life is good, then it's okay, but I had a meter, it just ate through these 9 volt batteries, it was just expensive to run. So it has these nice quality fuses. What do they call these? HRC or something like that. And um, this, under the shielding, it looks like one of those precision uh, type resistor arrays. And I can see trims, trimmers all over this thing. And I don't know if that shows, but that is indeed a incandescent light bulb. <laughs> Looking around for date codes. I wonder why this is not masked off. See that? It's got the green mask here, and this is uh, just left bare. I don't know why they would do that. But, uh, womp, womp, womp. These are soldered in. These are screwed in. So, nope, I can't move these. So I'm going to have to find something or even get desperate and just solder a lead in here. 
or I can uh, use the screw. This screw fell out. If I can find a nut, I can uh, temporarily uh, screw down a wire in there. Might have to try that. Desperate times call for desperate measures, right? Uh, at least I can test the meter then, and uh, you know, see if it's worthy of finding a part for it. Here's the casing. Oh, look at that, the molding dates. Now, what is that? 97. Man, that 1997? This meter's been around a while. Here's the other part of the case. There's more of those molding dates. That one's even older, 96. So this meter is at least 22 years old. One thing that drives me crazy is a scratched up display. So you can get this stuff called Novus 2 scratch remover. Just take a damp cloth and uh, put some of this Novus on it, shake it up a little bit, and uh, put some on there. And as long as this doesn't have a hard coating, you can usually polish a lot of that out. Just kind of go in a circular motion all around, and you'll have to do it for a couple minutes at least. But I'll come back here and see if this display looks any better. And I'll try to clean up the case as much as I can. Much better. Not perfect, but far better than it was. I also cleaned up the goo and kind of, you know, cleaned it up a little bit all over. Make it look at least half decent. And I had an idea here. I found this tiny bolt nut and washer and that will allow me to put an alligator clip down the hole and clip on to the end of that uh, heck with the uh, wire idea it's just too small larger bolt the nut was just too big because of this rim around the uh, the socket here the nut wouldn't fit up in there so I couldn't do that so I'll assemble this thing and uh, run some basic tests yeah, yeah that idea worked out pretty well that stays on there pretty good so now I'm measuring voltages here just doing a comparison you can see that they're fairly close this screen is much more easier to see. This one's kind of dark, kind of like the Radio Shack meter is. It's not as light as the other one. Okay, Let's switch it to voltage here. Let's take a quick few measurements. 10 volts. I'm surprised at how accurate this power supply is. I mean, it's not the precision version. This is the cheaper, well, less per precision, I guess you could say. There's 5 volts. And look at that. I mean, that's pretty good. Okay, let's check some resistors here. These are 1Ks. Point nine nine, yeah, it's pretty good. And we have these. I think these are one hundreds here. One hundred. These are one percent metal films. I don't have really super precise resistors. Not a bias set just for uh, checking meters. Those things are really expensive, though. You pay like 10 bucks for a resistor. These are 22s. 
Yeah, fairly close. I think I was getting about the same on the EEV blog meter. Okay, so now I'm measuring frequency using the field tech. And they're going to be pretty close. Frequencies are easy for multimeters to get right. I'll check a few other frequencies, but I'm sure they're going to be pretty accurate. The guy who sent me this meter says it can measure AC voltages up to fairly high frequencies, like 20 kilohertz. Usually these meters only are good for 1 kilohertz or so. So I have the field tech set up for 10 volts, and that's peak to peak. So that'll be like 3.53 volts. And you can see this one's reading pretty well. This one seems to be a little off on the AC voltage. But we're at 100 hertz right now. So let's go up to 1 kilohertz, see what it outputs. I know the field tech might roll off. Well, it should be fine in the audio range. 2 kilohertz. three, four, five. I have to check the manual. This one seems to be hanging on. This one's dropping out a little bit. At 20 kilohertz, this one's doing a pretty darn good job. This one dropped out a little, but it's not too bad. I have to check the manual. I wasn't aware this one could measure frequencies that high on the AC volt setting. I thought it was, was supposed to drop off for around 1 kilohertz. So that's a pleasant surprise, I guess. Okay, so I checked the amp range and it was pretty much bang on. I did find that that fuse is open, needs changed. I should have checked that when I had the case open, but oh well. But everything seems to be pretty accurate. I mean, it might need some calibration. It is a pretty old meter, you know, at least 22 years old. But it seems to be doing the business. I'll have to download a manual and uh, see what all this functionality is. But well, that'll wrap it up for this one. Now, within a span of two weeks, got a couple really nice meters. I really appreciate you guys doing that for me, sending that in. Thanks for watching.